right there. That's it. those of you who joined us online or by way of CD, we'd like to welcome you to Kingdom Truth Church. We pray that the Lord will bless you richly in the Word of God. We're teaching from a series entitled New Beginnings, and we're in a section entitled The New Birth Experience. Now I want you to turn with me uh, to a passage of Scripture in the book of Genesis. Genesis is the book of beginnings. And I'm going to ask that you would turn to the sixth chapter. And it's a familiar passage. And I'm going to begin reading, if you don't mind. I know some people don't like for you to do a lot of Bible reading when you are presenting the Word of God. But I just believe that there is power in the Word of God. How many of you believe that? Believe that the Word of God, if it's read with the Spirit of God moving, and, and if it's listened to and, and, and received with the Spirit of God, that it will preach itself. And so I want you to get there, and I want you to read along with me. I'm going to start at the fifth verse. And in your own time, I want you to go back and read the entire chapter. Amen? Amen. And I'm going to start at the fifth verse. And it reads, and I'm reading from the NIV. And the Lord saw how great man's wickedness on the earth had become. Yeah. And that every inclination of the thoughts, say thoughts, thoughts, of the thoughts of his heart was only evil all the time. Yeah. Verse 6. And the Lord was grieved that he had made man on the earth and his heart was filled with pain. So the Lord said, I will wipe out mankind whom I have created from the face of the earth and, and men and animals and creatures that move along the ground and the birds in the air. I am grieved that I have made them. Verse 8. But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. Yeah. Now, verse 9 says that this is the account of Noah. Noah was a righteous man. Say righteous man. He was righteous, he was blameless among the people of his time, and he walked with God. Say, walked with God. Walk with God. Now, Noah had three sons. He had three sons, and their name was Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And now the earth was corrupt in God's sight and full of violence. And God saw how corrupt the earth had become, for all the people on the earth had corrupted their ways. So God said to Noah, I am going to put an end to all people, for the earth is filled with violence because of them. And I am surely going to destroy both of them and the earth. So make yourself an ark of cypress wood and, and make room in it for make room in it and coat it with pitch inside and out. Verse 15. This is how you are to build it. Now, the ark will be 450 feet long and 75 feet wide, wide and 75 feet, 45 feet high. Now, make a room in it for, uh, make a room and finish the ark within 15 inches of the top and put a door on the side of the ark and make a lower, middle, and upper deck. And I'm going to bring floodwaters on the earth to destroy all life under the heavens. Every creature that has breath and life in it. Everything on the earth will perish, but I will establish my covenant with you. You will enter into the, to the ark, you and your sons and your wives and your sons' wives with you. You are to bring into the ark two of all living creatures, male and female, to keep them alive with you. Two of every kind of bird and every kind of animal and every kind of creature that moves along the ground will come to you. To keep them alive. You are to take every kind of food. That is to be eating, eaten and store it away as food for you and for them. And here's one of the most important verses in all of that body. Noah did everything just as God commanded him. And the church said. Amen. 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 When we look at world history. And that includes biblical history. We find that many great pioneers 
of mankind were often inspired by a great vision. From the men of God such as Noah, Abraham, Moses, Jeremiah, and women of God like Mary, the mother of Jesus, Elizabeth, and Hannah, to name a few. Not to mention our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who is in deity God himself incarnate. And in his humanity the greatest man to ever live. There were also great visionaries in U.S. history like uh, President Lincoln, Frederick Douglass, and the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King. And the thing that all of these men had in common was a burning passion to follow a vision that was bigger than themselves. In Christ, if we believe, understand this, not all visions will come from God. That's right. come on. Not all visions will come from God. Mm-hmm. Now with the church, we find that here in the United States of America, the church has gotten itself into a stagnant position. When you look back in the history of the Bible, and even when you look back at the history of this, this nation, you'll find that there was a progression. And the progression was always a progression to move to a place that was not. When you look at the very beginnings, when God said, let us make man in his image and in our own likeness, there, the Bible says that there was chaos. Yeah. And then God spoke something into existence. He spoke something that he already saw, but it did not yet exist. If we are going to be used by God in a mighty way, it will start with vision. The word of God says that, see, if there is not a vision, the people will perish. I don't care what it is. It can be any type of organization. It can be a business. It can be a family. It can be a church, whatever it may be. If it does not have a vision... It'll perish. You see, when we have vision, we have direction. When we have vision, we have hope. Come on, somebody say amen. Amen. Where there's vision, there is hope. Now, now, when we look at things, we said that not all visions come from God. And so when we look at it, there are some visions that do come from God. And these are pure and good. There are other visions that come from man. And man, they're both good and evil. Say both good. And evil. Look, just because it comes from man doesn't mean it's bad. Amen. It is both good and evil. And then there is vision that comes from the devil. And that's pure evil. I don't care what the devil gives. It's pure evil. I don't care if it looks good. It's pure evil. And it lines up with the spirit realm. We said in the spirit realm, if you divide the spirit realm up into three parts, we said there is the spirit of God, there is the spirit of man, and there is the spirit of Of the devil. Just because it's spirit doesn't mean it's good. Somebody say amen. Amen. And we find ourselves in a stagnant place. Because we do not recognize the spirit of God from the spirit of man from the spirit of the devil. So we can be easily deceived. Webster calls vision. It says it's a valid picture seeing a dream or, or seen in a dream or, or a trance or in the imagination. It's foresight. It's the power of seeing. How many of you have the power to see this morning? Amen. The Bible says that I want to give you vision that comes not with the natural eyes, but come with the spiritual eyes. I want to give you understanding that comes with the spiritual mind and not with just the natural mind. I want to give you vision. Without vision, we will perish. Without vision, we will have to just kind of, you know, just kind of just mosey along. And, and, then, and then, you know what? Here's the thing that happens when you don't have vision. See, if you don't have vision from God, what ends up happening is man will rise up and man will create a vision. That's what has happened in this country. Because we have lost our way, because we have lost focus on the true vision of God, man has risen up 
And man has created a vision, and he said this vision is from God. The Bible says that we'll stand, there will be an abomination that will stand right in the house. Stand on the throne and say, I am God. We have to be wise. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. How can we determine whether a vision is derived from the spirit of God or the spirit of man? Now, I'm, the reason why I just said the spirit of God and the spirit of man, because, see, the devil is a deceiver. And, and, and many of us, we understand how the devil operates. He's come to kill, he comes to steal, and he comes to destroy. What he'll do, he'll come and he'll try to, he'll try to bring something to you that looks like God. Whenever God gives you a vision, and I, I'm trying to stay calm because it gets, I get, I'm getting excited. I try to stay calm. Whenever God gives you a vision, amen, what, the first thing that's going to happen is there is going to be a duplicate that's going to rise up. Amen. Whenever God gives you a vision, whenever God gives you purpose, whenever God sets something before you, and, and in your heart you know it's God because you know it's bigger than you. In your heart you know it's God because you know that it's not just for you. Uh, the, the devil will come immediately and he will try to put something right in there to look just like what God has set up for you. Because he knows that the only way that he's going to deceive you, the only way he's going to get you is he's going to have to deceive you. Amen. So you have to be mindful of that. Most of us, we have a problem with the, the, the spirit of man because we believe that the spirit of man is all good. The spirit of man is both good and, and evil. That's why you have to watch out for it. Eve took up the, the tree and she said, you know, now I can get all knowledge, good and evil. She couldn't handle it. Amen. Here's how you know the difference between God's vision and man's vision. God's vision promotes the kingdom of God. While man's vision promotes the man. Amen? See, one, votes, one, one promotes the kingdom of God, the other promotes man. Whenever you see man lifted up, you know that that is the spirit of man. Whenever you see a man, he's lifted up and he's lifting himself up and he's walking around like he is it. Then you know that the spirit of man is operating in the house. If you ever see me walking around or if you ever see any of the other leaders walking around here like it's them, like they're it, you know that they're not being led by the spirit of God, being led by the spirit of man. It is the kingdom of God that should be lifted up. It is the kingdom of God that should be advanced. The next thing, the agenda. If it's the spirit of God, it is a heavenly agenda. Amen. It is a heavenly agenda. It is about saving souls. Whenever a vision comes to you that is of God, listen to me carefully. Whenever a vision comes to you and it is about advancing the kingdom of God in saving souls for Christ, you know this is a vision that comes from God. The devil is not about saving souls, and man is not about saving souls. Now, man is, is about pimping people, but he's not about saving souls. Amen. Now, some men who are good, you know, who are good, and we have to, we have to, you know, have to have to put that in a certain category. Amen. We're not talking about compared to God, but just good natured, you know, in, in humanity. He would, he would, he would uh, do good things uh, just to advance humanitarianism, you know. He would do things just to advance mankind, but he would never do things to advance the kingdom of God. He would never be about advancing Jesus Christ. Amen. We see that now in our society. If you say Jesus Christ, all of a sudden you'll see the countenance of everybody change. It was a time when you said Jesus Christ and it was all good. It was okay. You know, people were pretty much neutral. Now people are no longer neutral. They realize that the name of Jesus Christ is a problem. And presents a problem. And we're going to see that the more and the more. Listen to me, church. Listen to me. We're going to see a time where it is going to be straight up hostility against the name of Jesus Christ. It's, it's happening now. Oh, it ain't happening like you think. It's, it's going to happen much worse. It's going to be much worse. You're going to start seeing churches fold. You're going to start seeing churches give in. They're going to give up on the word of God and they're going to start changing their whole doctrine. We got to stand on the word of God. You can tell the difference between the vision of, of God and you can tell the difference between the, the, the vision of man. Uh, is, it, it's transferable. When you get a vision from God, it is transferable. See, the vision of God is not predicated on you alone. See, when you're out of here, God will transfer that vision over to other people. As a matter of fact, God already have others that have the vision already. 
They already have it. Amen? What did the word of God say? Look, you ain't the only one. You know, you start thinking that you're the only one. Amen? You, you're thinking that, you know, you're it. Ain't nobody else. Who was it, Elijah, who thought he was the only one? He started crying out, Lord, what are, what are we going to do? What's going to happen? I'm the only one. God said, no, you ain't the onlyest one. <laughs> you're not the onlyest one. I got others. I'm just teasing. Amen. They say, onious? Yeah, I'm just teasing. Amen. He said, you're not the only one. It's transferable. When you know, see, that's how you know you're, you're operating under the vision of the spirit of God. It's transferable. It's not predicated on you and you alone. Amen. Amen. Let me tell you, let me tell you something. If something should happen to me, amen, the next person just steps up. You just step up and you start, you, you know, that's, that's what happens. It's not predicated on one person. You fall down, next man up. Now, we're not, we're not going to be cold and callous about it, amen, but we got to keep it moving. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. It's transferable. See, when it's man's vision, it dies with the man. See, if it's your thing, it dies with you. And nobody else catch fire. It may last a couple of generations, but soon it'll die off. What did they say about Jesus? They said, look, leave them men alone. Let them preach Jesus, because if it's not really from God, it'll die off. If it's from man, it'll die off. But if it's from God, who, who can fight with God? You want to follow a vision that's from God, church. You don't want to follow a vision that's from man. Let me tell you something. You look up and you look up at the skirt and you find that this vision is of man. No, you don't want to follow a vision of man. You want to follow the vision of God. There's rewards, amen? Vision from God is heavenly rewards. It's heavenly rewards. If you don't like heavenly rewards, then don't work for God. Come on, somebody say amen. Amen, don't work for God. If you don't like heavenly rewards, don't work for God, amen? Because God knows how to reward you. Come on, somebody say amen. He said, I reward them who diligently seek after me. I'm going to tell you firsthand, let me tell you, when God bless you, he bless you real good, amen? I'm going to tell you something, God bless you so good that when God says, okay, give that back to me, you don't have a problem with it because you know how God operates, amen? If you give God something back, God, you already know God got something better for you. You already know it. You already know it's a test, amen? You ride in a nice car, you know, and you, I mean, you, you high rolling, amen? And, and God said, I need you to turn that in, amen? God, I need you. I mean, that's real, amen? That's why some people don't go to ministry. That's why some people don't get involved with ministry, because they don't want to have to give up their things, amen? But see, when you have to go into ministry, sometimes you got to give up some things. Why? Because we have to advance the kingdom of God, amen? Sometimes you got too much stuff dragging you down. And God say, if you give that up, he said, I will bless you. I will bless you. But, but some people, they're scared of that, and so they, they back off of God. But see, God have heavenly rewards. See, the rewards from heaven, you can use them, and they never run out. Come on, somebody say amen. I like God's kind of rewards because they don't run out, amen? That's why when God say give something back, I say, sure, you can have it back because I know what's coming back is much more. Some 30, some 60, some 100. Oh, that sounds good to me. Amen. Oh, that's a good return. But see, with the man's vision, it's only earthly rewards. The Bible says earthly rewards will perish. If you, look, let me tell you something. If you invest in earthly rewards, if you invest in the world constantly, let me tell you something. If you do that, your rewards are only here. They won't, they won't enter into heaven. They won't be eternal. They won't last. The Bible says all this stuff will pass away. He said, but my things don't never pass away. Amen. My goodness don't ever pass away. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. Look, when we look at the passage of Scripture with Noah, there are three basic principles that we can follow. Amen. Now, when I say principle, I mean it's, it's a just general or a fundamental law. It's a rule or a code, a conduct or a devotion to such a code. Amen. So if a person doesn't have any principles, then you don't want to deal with that individual, amen? That means that they'll, they'll, they'll float with the wind. They'll fly back and forth. They'll be standing on one thing today, and then they'll be changing up and do something totally different tomorrow. You can't bank on them, amen? You know what I mean? You can't bank on them. They, they say yay, nay, yay, nay, yay, nay. But a person with principles, as long as the principles are lining up, it's yay and amen. You can bank on me, amen? If I tell you something, I'm going to do it, amen? If I'm not going to do it, I'm going to call you and say, hey, I can't do it. 
got to have these principles. Number one, this is what Noah had. He had posture principle. Amen? He had pro posture principle. He had position principles. And he had progressive principles. Let me read them again. He had posture principles. He had position principles. And he had progressive principles. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move right through this swiftly. Amen? I need you to get it. I need you to get it. First of all, he had posture principles. Our posture, when it comes to our Lord and Savior, should always be that of humility and reverence toward God. James 4 and 6 says, but he gives more grace. That is why the scripture says God opposes the proud, but giveth grace to the humble. I want you to know that Noah was a humble man. Amen. He had to hear the word of God. God told him, Noah, look, I'm going to destroy I'm going to destroy all of the earth. I'm going to wipe it all out. But I found favor with you. I found favor with you. And then he said, I want you to build. Now, now, and the people say, Noah, you know, Noah, the carpenter, whatever. I don't know what, you know, you go back and read the history. I don't know what he was, you know, before, what his profession was before. But I will tell you what, he learned quickly. Amen. Come on, somebody say amen. Amen. See, now God is the, the quickest teacher. You can say, Lord, but I don't know how to hold the hammer. God say, look, if I tell you to do it, then I'll give you the goods to do it. Amen. 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 Whatever God tells you to do, he'll give you the goods. Whatever it is. And usually when God asks you to do something, it's going to be out of, outside of your ability to be able to do it. Amen. You're going to need God. Amen. See, you know, people come in and they say, you know, God told me to do this. And it's easy. They can do it with their eyes closed. They can do it without praying. They can do it without fasting. They can do it, you know, they, they do it naturally. Matter of fact, they were doing it before they got saved. I'm going to tell you something. Nine times out of ten, that's coming from the spirit of man. When it's coming from the spirit of God, sometimes it's something you ain't never done before. And you say, Lord, you got to be kidding me. You must be talking to the wrong person. You must want my neighbor next door. That's a real spiritual person over there. They, you're not talking about me, surely. God said, yeah, I'm talking about you. Because when I get through with you, I'm going to get the glory. Come on, somebody say amen. But you have to be humble enough to do it. See, let me. the reason why being humble is important is because, see, many of us, we don't step out on faith. We don't step out because we don't want to look bad. No, but let's just be honest about it. Sometimes God will put a call on our life. God will put something in us. He says, I want you to do this. But you say, no, God, I can't do that. I can't do that. And it's really not about messing up God's plan. You just don't want to mess up your rep. Come on, somebody say amen. I ain't trying to get up there and look stupid. I'm not trying to do this. Man, people are going to say this. People are going to say that. God said, they're going to talk anyway. You can be perfect and unblemished. They still going to they'll make up something about you. I done got to the point where I, look, I done got to the point where I don't worry about what people say. Because folk will start making up stuff. You try, to, you try to live righteous, try to live holy, whatever. Folk will, just, folk will twist stuff around and be like, you too righteous, you too holy, you think you this, you think you this. People will make up stuff about you. Don't worry about that. Amen? But you have to be humble. The way that you know that you're humble, let me tell you something. I'm, 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 I don't have a lot of time, so I'm going to give you one, I'm going to give you one, one thing, that, one test. Amen? This is one test. Amen. Are you all listening to me? You listening to me? Let me go over here. I'm going to go on this side over here. Let me see. Are you all listening to me? Okay. Here, here's the one test to let you know where you are as far as your humble meter. Can you take constructive criticism? Can you take constructive criticism from somebody that's close to you? Woo Come on. Somebody say amen. Huh? Can you take it? Or do you start getting defensive? Do you start jumping? Do, 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 do bumps start growing up on the, on the back of your, your, your hair, raised up on the back of your head? Huh? What, was the, what, what happens? Do you get defensive? Amen? See, that's, that's a meter. That, that shows you where you are, especially when you're in the right. Huh? Especially when you're in the right. Does that thing rise up? See, that's where you can tell where you are. You have to be humble. Because I'm going to tell you something. Most of your growing is going to come from constructive criticism. I need, you to, I need you to correct me. If I have a booger in my nose, I need you to tell me I got a booger in my nose. Don't think that you know, I'm going to be, oh, he's going to be offended if I tell him he has a booger in his nose. No, tell me I have a booger in my nose. Amen? Right. That way I can get it out, and that's an improvement. Amen? Is that an improvement? If you get, a, if you get something out of your nose, that's an improvement. If something's on my teeth, if I get it out, that's an improvement. Amen? Amen? I thank God. I thank God for wives. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. 
You get up here, you preaching and teaching, she tell you everything, you know. You know, and so I, I'm, getting more, I'm getting smarter now. I'm getting more sophisticated, amen. Before, I used to put her out there, huh? What did you say? What did you say? Now I'm getting more sophisticated about it. I know when to wipe my head and all of that stuff. Amen. You know, you, I get signals, amen, and that's a blessing. That's a help meet, amen. Somebody say amen. amen. For those of you who aren't married, amen, you know, God, he'll, he'll do a thing. Come on. <laughs> he'll do a thing. I have a good thing. Come on. Somebody say amen. But you have to be humble, amen. You have to be humble. Men, you have to be humble. Men, you have to be humble. If you're not humble, God will never be able to use you. If you're not humble, let me tell you something for married men. Married men, say amen. amen. If you're not humble toward God, your wife will not be humble toward you. Can I get an amen? amen? If you're not humble and you don't allow God, look, if you don't allow God to have his way in your life, God will, see, God is the one that's keeping your wife. Come on, somebody say amen. Hey, you know what? Because let me tell you something. When you look at how things have been in the past, I don't know how a woman could trust a man. Come on. Let's just be honest about it. Amen. Let's just be honest about it. Over some of the things that the, the sisters have been through, I don't know how a sister can trust a man and say, I got to obey him. Oh, no. Oh, please. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm not getting married. So for God to bless you with a, a wife, amen, for God to bless you, you know, with a help me. You have to be at a place where you now say, Lord, I know I'm not worthy, but make me worthy. And you have to submit yourself to God and be humble. Noah was a humble man. Because when God told Noah, I want you to do something that's just kind of crazy. Now, I want you to brace yourself. It's crazy. Build an ark. And Noah said, what? what? Build a what? What's an ark? It's going to rain. What is that? And he had to do it. But guess what happened? Not only did he do it. But his wife was with him, and his sons was with him, and their wives was with them. Right. Why? Because he was a humble man. Humble himself before God. God will deal with everything else. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. His position. He had, he had position principles. See, many Christians never get a chance to receive a vision from God is because we're always out of position. One thing leads to another. Because we're so prideful, we're often out of position. One of the problems is that man do not understand the word of God. The word of God says that under, that over every man is Christ. Over Christ is God. Amen. For the woman, they said the man, then Christ, then God. There's an order. There is an order here. But because we often find ourselves out of position, because we don't want to submit, we don't want to humble ourselves. We see ourselves void of the power of God, and we see ourselves disqualified from receiving a valid vision from God. So we got to make up religion. We got to do the religious thing, or we got to make up a vision. You know, we're going to build a building. We're going to buy this neighborhood. We're going to start a daycare. We're going to... You know, start a restaurant, we're gonna open up a barbershop, we're gonna do all of these things are great. Amen. All of these, hey, we may do some of these things, amen. They're great. But this is not advancing the kingdom. Advancing the kingdom is saving souls. You in the barbershop cutting hair, you saving souls, amen. You in there, y'all talking Jesus. Amen. Your whole aim and your whole goal is saving souls. You praying over the, look, you in, the, in, 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 your, in the barber chairs, you praying over those barber chairs before they come in. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I pray that these brothers come in here, Lord God, and as they're getting their hair cut, I pray, Lord God, that you would save each and every one of them. Lord God, we permeate this place with your presence right now in the name of Jesus. Oh, you say you're, 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 not, you're not a barber. You, you say you're a builder. Well, you go in and you start building a house. You say, Lord God, I pray that you sanctify this house right now in the name of Jesus. Well, you, you know, you work for a company. When you go into that company, you go in early in the morning. You say, Lord God, well, you got to get there early to do this. Amen. Can't be late. Come on, somebody say amen. You get there, you have to be early. Amen. You go there, you start praying over the place. Lord God, I pray that you sanctify this place right now in the name of Jesus. All the foul spirits, I pray that you, those foul spirits out of this place, Lord God. See, we have to be kingdom minded. God will give you a vision. He'll show you. He'll tell you. I want you to do it. When he talked to Moses, he gave Moses specific instructions. Moses followed those instructions. First Corinthians I read that one already. Hebrews 13, 17, it says, Obey your leaders and submit to their authority, 
they keep watch over you as men who must give an account. Obey them so that their work may be a joy, not a burden. For that, turn, y'all turn to Hebrews uh, 13, 17. Y'all won't think I'm making it up. <laughs> Hebrews 13 and 17. Amen. You there say amen. Write it down. Amen. Obey your leaders. It says leaders. Amen. It's not a one-man show. Leaders. And submit to their authority. They keep watch over you as men who must give an account. Obey them so that their work may be a joy and not a burden. For that would not be an advantage to you. You hear that? Oh, it's not in your Bible? I said, y'all still turning. That, that, that page not in your Bible? Oh, <laughs> Hebrew 13, Hebrew 13, 17 chapter. Amen. I hope I didn't write that in. Amen. But see, many of us are resistant to authority. We're resistant to authority. But that's not how Noah was. That's not how Noah was. I, and I, now, I'm going to tell you, I'm, God's getting me there. Come on, somebody say amen. He's getting me there. You know, because sometimes when God asks you to do something crazy, you're like, Lord, you got the wrong person. You, you got the wrong person. When God first told me about this church, I said, you got the wrong person. Here's a commercial say, you got the right one, baby, uh-huh. No, I said, God, you got the wrong person. I am not the guy. Amen? God said, no, you are exactly the guy. You are the guy because I'm going to put in you what you need. I'm going to give you what you need. You will never be able to steal my glory because you will never be able to operate without me. Let me tell you something. Can I share something with you guys? Am I taking too long? Look, let, me, let, me, let me tell you something. It's very difficult for gifted, I mean straight up gifted people, out of the womb you were gifted. It is very difficult for gifted people to be used mightily by God and they don't steal the glory. Very difficult. If you're, if you're one of those, and, and God can use you, he, he can use you. But if you're one of those people who are just gifted out of the womb, you're just gifted. I mean, it's just whatever you touch, turn to go. You're gifted. It is very difficult. And the reason why is because you're nine times out of ten, because people pump you up so much and worship you so much that it is tough for you to worship anybody else because you're used to being worshipped. See, a God don't worship other people. Come on, somebody say amen. A God does not worship other people. And that's why the teaching that tells you that you are a God, you, have you heard those teachings that tell you, you know, you're a God, you're a little G-God. See, gods don't worship other gods. Come on, somebody say amen. That's why that is a heresy. But see, when people pump you up and worship you and bow down to you, it is very difficult for you to bow down to other people because now you're walking around like you're a god. Can't do it. That's why God would often stretch you beyond your gifts and abilities. Amen? You be look, you be trying to look, you be trying to get over on yesterday's little gifting. You know, you, you know, yesterday's gifting, but God said, No, I'm stretching you. You gotta cry out to me. You got to cry out to me, amen? And you can't get, oh, oh, what you did last year don't count. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. You done already got paid for that. Amen. You done got paid for that already. God said, what are you doing today? Huh? What are you doing today? Noah was good because Noah said, Lord, here am I. I'm going to do exactly what you say to do. He said, this, these are things that we have to do. Number three. He had a progressive principles. Progressive. Say progressive. progressive. Let me tell you something. Can I share something about my mother? My mother was very progressive. Can I be honest? I'm going to be honest with y'all. You know, Sometimes you don't tell personal things too much. Well, at least I, I don't tell all of them. <laughs> I used to wonder. I used to wonder. My mother was so progressive. I used to wonder, what was the holdup? I used to wonder, what was the holdup in ministry? I would come to church. I would come to church, and the church did not reflect who my mother was. Y'all understand what I'm saying? I would come, and the church would not reflect who my mother was. And that thing confused me. Can I tell y'all I ain't confused no more? Come on, somebody say Amen. I'm not confused anymore. <laughs> I mean, she was so progressive. And people, if you didn't know her, you would, and you just came to church because the church, the church was way back, further back than she was. 
She was like out there. And you would wonder, you say, the church does not reflect who she is. And I could not understand that. And I thank God for her because she never pitched blame. She never, you know, she never pitched blame and said, this is the reason why. Now, she may have told other people, she didn't tell me. Amen. And guess what? I understand that as well. Sometimes you don't know until you get into position. Amen. That's why you have to do it by faith. God showed me. He showed me an example of Moses. And he said, I gave Moses. Moses was progressive. Moses was progressive. He knew exactly what he was going to do. He knew, he, look, we got to take them out of here. And we got, he tried to do it his own way. He messed up. But he, he said, look, we're going to go over into the promised land. Moses was just hot-headed. That's all. He was hot-headed, and he had people who w wasn't with the program. They were only with the program as long as they were receiving. As long as they were getting what they wanted, they were good with Moses. As soon as they weren't getting what they wanted, they started to rebel against Moses. And they rebelled against the wrong one because Moses was hot-headed, and he wouldn't take it, amen? He would get angry, and he would, and, and so he ended up losing the benefits of being able to go over into the promised land. But the Bible says that he was able to see it from afar off. God showed me, he, he said, now, you guys are getting ready to, to move forward in fulfilling the promise. He said, but see, the young people got to move over. Young people got to go over. Amen? Amen? He said, I got to take y'all over. But see, guess what will happen? The story wasn't over when they got over to the promised land because guess what? God blessed them, and guess what they did? They rebelled against God. God blessed them real good. He said, look, y'all promise me y'all not going to worship false gods. Promise me y'all not going to try to act like the people in the world. Promise me y'all going to stay true to me. God blessed them tremendously. And guess what? They ended up rebelling against God. Why? Because they wanted to be like the world. Church, do not try to be like the world. What God has in each and every one of us is special. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. What God has inside of each and every one of us is special. He's given each and every one of us something that will fulfill our lives. Not only just here, but for an eternity. What you're looking for in this world, you're not going to get it. What you're looking for is in Christ Jesus. What you're looking for is in the vision of God for your life. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. The enemy's going to pull at you. The world's going to pull at you. Amen? Because what God has in you is attractive. It's attractive. When you start stepping toward God, that thing is attractive. It's, it's, that thing is so, and, and God just want to give birth to it. Let me tell you something. Once God gives birth to it, you know how a person that had baby, they keep having babies, keep having babies. When God starts birthing that stuff to you, you be dropping them babies, and folks start getting jealous of you, amen? See, they start hating on you. Why are you having all them babies? But see, here's what you, here's what you don't want to do. Let me tell you, here's what you don't want to do. You don't want to start dropping the world's babies. Because you can drop God's babies, and you can drop the world's babies. Amen? We want to give birth to what God gives us. He gives us vision. Let me tell you something. Remember when I told you all before, and we get ready to end. Remember when I told you before, I said, you know, when God gives you a vision, he gives you a piece of the vision. He gives you a piece. Brother T, you got a piece. We've talked. We've talked. It's giving you a piece. You got to be good with that. Amen? You got to be good with the peace that God, isn't that right? You got to be good with the peace that God gives to you. See, see, guess what? I only have a piece. Amen? I only have a piece. He said, now you have, don't despise small things. Because see, see, let me tell you something. These small, see, once you get your piece and you put it with your piece and you put it with your piece and you put it with your piece and all of these pieces start to come together, all of a sudden you start to get the picture. But here's the thing. God wants you to be able to see it before it comes to pass. That's vision. God has a tremendous vision for us. God has a tremendous vision. I can, I, can, I can look at you guys 
And God will be giving me little sneak peeks, little sneak peeks. And what he's doing is tremendous. He's, what he's doing is tremendous. And some of you get so close. You get so close to receiving abundant blessings from God, and then you give up. You get right up to the threshold, and then you give up. And I'll be shaking my head, and I'll be like, man, you don't even realize how close you were to receive. See, what God does, he wants to get you to a certain place. Then he'll bless you abundantly. Then he says, okay, I'm going to stretch you some more. Then he'll bless you again, you know, and that's how God operates, amen? And by the time you look up, man, you're walking, and you're just walking. Before, when you first came in Jesus, you, all you could do is crawl. You crawl into Jesus, amen? Come on, let's be honest about it. Then many of y'all walk up in here like this. Yeah, you know, I'm going to get saved because, you know, God needs me. You know what I mean? This kingdom business is going to really get started when I get in here. You know what I mean? No, many of us were dragging in here. God had to bring us in on a cart. <laughs> walk us in, amen? In the wheelbarrow, whatever. He had to bring us in. Let me tell you something. But see, when God fixed you up, when God put his gifts all on inside of you and revealed his gifts to you, all of a sudden he started blessing you. Now all of a sudden you start walking a little tall now, and all of a sudden now you start getting your swag on. Getting your swag on. Jesus said, hey, um, I need you to do something. Not right now. I'm just swagging right now. I got my own thing. Let me, then, Lord, let me negotiate with you. We've been negotiating with God. Let me negotiate with you, God. You know, now here's my plan. Let me see your plan. Now, if your plan can work with my plan, then, God, we got some business. I tried that. <laughs> God said, I'm going to do, okay, you want to work that way? You know, hey, look, you don't want to get God angry, amen? God blessed me real good. He said, okay, you want to put your plan against my plan? God said, okay, I'm going to do away with your plan. <laughs> now, start from scratch. <laughs> I said, okay, Lord, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I turned religious. Hallelujah. I said, Lord, have your way with me. Have your way with me. Holy Spirit, have your way. And I'm telling you, I'm laid down on the floor crying. Have your way with me. It wasn't, hum it wa it wasn't because I made myself humble. God made me humble. And let me tell y'all something. Can I, can I share something with y'all? I'm going to close. God know how to do that to me now. When God give me a little warning... He say, he say, son, he say, son, you want to humble yourself. He just said, just like that. He said, son, you want to humble yourself. I'd be like, yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Humble myself. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Learn how to say I apologize. Amen. When, when a man or woman can't say I'm sorry, I apologize, that's pride. Every born again Christian should be able to say I apologize. Amen. An adult should be able to go to a child and say, I apologize. I was wrong. I was wrong. Amen. That's how God deals with it. Let me tell you something. The flesh, the flesh is only going to be killed in the end. Amen. When all is said and done and done and said, that's when the flesh will be killed. Right now, we got to mortify the deeds of the flesh. We got to mortify the deeds of the flesh. And this is on a daily basis. Amen. And you got you to be true to yourself.